Dewey Soda, Georgia, the site of the Cherokee Indians first capital. This is where the, they published their first newspaper, the Cherokee Phoenix. This is where the very controversial Treaty of Nui Chodo was signed. And this is where my dad and I are taking you on this edition of Historical Geocaching on the Road. Nui Chota, Cherokee National Capital. The sprawling town of Newtown, which had stood here since 1819, was designated the seat of government for the New Cherokee Nation in a Legislative Act of 1825, and it was renamed Nui Chota for a former principal town in Tennessee. In its short history, Nui Chota was the site of the first Indian language newspaper office, a court case which carried to the U.S. Supreme Court, one of the earliest experiments in national self-government for an Indian tribe, the signing of a treaty which relinquished Cherokee claims to lands east of the Mississippi, and the Assembly of Indians for the removal west. As you might imagine, there are some geocaches here at Nui Choda. Certainly won't have time to pick up all of them, but I want to pick up a few. There is a virtual here. This tree that was planted in memory of the um, Cherokee Indians and the Trail of Tears. And of course, we're not gonna give you the answer, but there's a very nice plaque here that talks about it, and I'm really excited to score a smiley at this awesome historical location. Now let's go visit Nui Choda, have some more historical geocaching fun. There was a very nice museum inside the Nui Choda Visitor Center, talking about how the Indian lands got smaller and smaller as the Americans the Americans encroached on them. Um, awesome history that I so much I can't even begin to explain, but talking about how things changed for the Indians, two cultures um, colliding. Um, looks like here's some machinery um, the Indians used. Talking about um, Sequoia's Cherokee alphabet that really helped the literacy and connection of the Indians. Talking about Georgia here, the state of Georgia wanting to take away Indian land. John Marshall was a Supreme Court justice who actually ruled in favor of the Indians keeping their land, and John and President Jackson didn't have too many kind things to say to him. Instead, Georgia and Cherokee land was divvied up into plots and sold to eager white settlers, and the Trail of Tears happened. Coming up on here is there, there's the route of the Trail of Tears, Chattanooga and um, Nui Chota right there where this video is shot. And coming up here is a picture of John Ross's wife Kwati, who was John Ross was the major Cherokee chief during the Trail of Tears. Thought I just need to see a picture of her. Even though Nui Chota is a Georgia State Historic Site, it is still very much a registered site on the Trail of Tears National Historic Trail. You know what that means? I'm getting my National Park Passport stamped. Well, this is certainly very interesting, a Cherokee farmstead they have here. Um, not original to this spot, but buildings moved from other places to symbolize and show what a Cherokee farmstead was like. Let's go check this out. Some Cherokee farms had barns and stables. The drive-through design of this one provided a protected place for farm equipment and animals. Milk cows and draft animals were kept in the stalls part of the time so they would be close at hand when needed. Beef, cattle, and hogs were allowed to roam freely, so each garden and cornfield in the Cherokee Nation had to be fenced. Corn cribs were the most common outbuildings in the Cherokee Nation. Almost every Cherokee farm included one or more cribs. Corn was hauled from the field and stored in the crib. Still on the cob and in the shuck it would air dry sufficiently to be ground into meal, made into hominy, or fed to livestock. 
Some cribs, like this one, had plunder sheds to protect tools and wagons from the weather. This crib includes its original puncheon floor. Puncheons are logs split lengthwise to pre present a plank-like surface. By the er early 1800s, most Cherokee homes had puncheon floors. This house is typical of what a middle-class Cherokee family of the early 1800s would have lived in. Furnishings in Cherokee homes vary greatly depending on the wealth of the family. Many of the furnishings were identical to those that white families used, but look for some unique Cherokee features such as the river cane blowgun over by the door, the ball sticks used to play a nest stuff, and the mortar and pestle used to grind corn. Traditional crafts such as basket weaving, pottery making, and finger weaving were still in wide use, so Cherokee homes usually had a variety of handmade items along with other items purchased at local stores. Well, that was certainly very interesting to see this Cherokee farmstead, to see how some Cherokee Indians of the 1820s and 30s might have lived as they adopted increasingly civilized and white ways. Um, of living as they tried to assimilate into American and white culture, yet still try to hold on to their land and their some of their culture. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed learning some more amazing American history. If you like this kind of stuff, be sure to check out the annotations on the screen for more of my videos. And if you haven't hit that big red subscribe button yet, please do so now as I publish new videos each and every week on Wednesdays. As always, this is History Buff TN Photobuck signing out, and I am indeed having a blast with the past.